We're down to the final hours, final countdown before our Japan trip and things are not going well. Look at this. Look at this. We don't need to wait for coming back from Japan to make that video. My goodness. I see polyps, but the gold, I can't even speak. Golden rod and Kapora is almost bone white at this point. I do see polyps. I see some algae growing at the tips. The, uh, the frag is still kind of holding on. Here's the contrast between the two. Uh, I see the TNT and the Kapora is bleached white. That is a goner for sure. Donnie kind of poofed up a little bit, which is kind of odd. At this point, I suspect, well, of course, we all talked about the uh, light shock and that's probably the uh, main catalyst. The light shock, since I swapped out the light and did not dial it back down enough, and then coupled it with the carbon reactor, clearing the water a little bit too much. So there's much more light penetration. And a combination of the two, I believe, stress out the coral, which opened the door for the bacterial infection, secondary infections, and that's just knocking things out. And, and Coporas are the first ones to go. Ganipora, I think it may be okay. Hopefully it may be okay. We'll find out in 10 days. The alkalinity consumption went way down because I dialed the light back and of course the cores are stressed and not uptaking alkalinity. But thankfully I'm able to control all those uh, remotely. So that's, that's kind of like the silver lining. I can kind of keep an eye out on the alkalinity and then update the dosage as needed. For comparison, I was dosing 5.5 milliliter of calc loser per minute. Uh, between 3 p.m. to 10 a.m. I think. Now I gotta dial it all the way down to 0.5 to let the level drop. We're gonna let it run for a couple days like this and I'm gonna slowly step back out to even things out. I'm trying to get a land back in the land of 8.5 to 9. That's kind of like my target. Here I'm stressing out while mom is stressing out because I should be helping her out more with packing and stuff. Look at her. Look at her. Look at her. Look at her. All you know is just talking. I know, that's all I do. I just talk. <laughs> oh, you're the best! You're the best! You're, like a you're baby. the best! You're, like a baby. you're the best, mommy! Call you're the mommy, best! Yeah. But she's going to Japan, she's happy. I am going to Japan. Yeah. I wish I could go by myself. Whoa, 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 whoa. Speaking of traveling to Asia, Emily's best friend happens to work at an awesome TV station in Hong Kong and helps produce some of their most popular shows. Unfortunately, the videos on their sites are region locked to Hong Kong and we are unable to play them here in the US. But fortunately, thanks to today's video sponsor, Surfshark VPN, we could connect to the Hong Kong server and begin watching all of the shows, as if we're physically located in Hong Kong. And Surfshark has more than 3,200 servers in 65 countries. I'm sure by now, most of you have seen an ad for VPN and know how it works. One of the big benefits is that when you sign into a video streaming service like Netflix, you get a different set of watchable titles depending on your location. For example, Rick and Morty's no longer available on Netflix in the US. Really sad, right? But did you know that they are still available if you set your location to say, our travel destination, Japan? The other huge and original benefits of VPN is of course, as its name implied, virtual private network. It helps keep your activities online private and secure by encrypting all internet traffic. And this is especially a good idea if you're using public Wi-Fi while working in a cafe or traveling. Buying a 24-month VPN plan with Surfshark is one of the best options that you can find now. Surfshark has a great offer of 83% off and three extra months. Just scan the QR code on the screen or click on the link in the video description below and use the code INAPPROPRIATE. Give it a try. It will be hard to find a better VPN solution for all of your devices with 24 seven support. Yes, Surfshark is the only VPN that supports unlimited devices that you own. It also has a 30 day money back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring the video today and putting our kids through college. Let's get back to the video. At this point, we're just gonna let things play out. Everything seems, it's not stable, but at least addressed. And we'll just let it settle in in the next two weeks. And when we come back, we'll have another look at how the tank is. Um, I fully expect to lose most, if not all of the Anacopora, unfortunately. It's just kind of reacting to what happened a week or two before. Uh, at this point, it's too late to really kind of reverse course. It just gotta run through his course. We gotta finish up the last minute packing and um, see you in Japan. One eternity later. Yo, we're here in Tokyo, Japan. We did not sleep last night at all. 
Thanks, dude. No, I did not sleep at all. Bro. But anyways, here, three, three night nights. Shirt. Three nights. Why? Three nights. Tokyo Tower's right there. Absolutely gorgeous. Sun is just coming out. We did not sleep, so we decided to go visit one of the fish markets. Remember the first booth we came to, the rice ball? Looked at the crazy line. I'm really glad that we came early. Good job, Nina. Behind a beautiful picture, we got a screaming baby right here. Did not sleep at all, all last night. Look at what we got back. We brought these back. Oh my goodness. And Emily swear this is like the best milk ever. No, Japanese milk is the best. Japanese milk is the best milk ever. And look at the size of the strawberry, man. We are able to see the Tokyo Tower and apparently Mount Fuji all the way out there. It's Good kind pick, of in a little, little, little Good job, haze. Emily. Good job, Good Emily. Job. Good job, Emily. so windy. Hot spring city. Yes. We got fellow vloggers right there. Look, just like in romantic movies. Except I'm holding my son. <laughs> There's our hotel. It's getting really, really cold. Perfect weather for hot spring. Onsen. Yeah, let's go in. Later. All right, y'all. I'm scared. I've not seen my tank for ten days. I've not seen my tank for ten days. Let me smell first. I don't smell anything dying. That's a good sign. Oh, oh, geez, man. Not terrible. Not terrible. Wow, oh, yeah, it's terrible. Okay. Oh, that's all she wrote for the SPS. Good lord. Oh man. Daddy, boo. Dad. 
It's bad. Which one is bad? It's bad. The color one? Yeah, it's bad. Which one? All of them. Yeah, it's bad. I'm not even sure what I was shooting because I was just looking at the tail. So if you look at the camera, I don't even have my orange filter on, but basically all the SPS gone. Now it's the second day. Uh, yesterday, Premier just landed. Uh, I didn't even unpack. We just all took a shower and crashed. It was so bad. Jet lag is. Oh, God. I'm looking at tech the second time, and I've been thinking while just kind of going in and out. I say, oh, God, because I'm looking at the tank right now. Um, I'm just thinking what could have happened. Let's take a Oh god, hold on. There's let me clean the basement real quick. It took me two days to really come down and face the music, but this is what it is. Uh, once again, LPS seems okay for the most part, except for the Space Invader. Space Invader, I see that the tip, there's a little bit of a tip recessions. But really, it's the SPS that completely got wiped out. Well, I wouldn't say completely. There's certain things like the Kung Pao that's still doing okay. Uh, that's a big plating Monty that's in the back. I absolutely love that piece. The other things are all pretty much wiped out. This is this is insane. No, not completely actually. There's some still some red dragon left. Um, what's even more insane is even the Monty cab is checking out. Well, obviously I'm gonna do a water change. Just goes without question. But uh, we sent an ICP test out yesterday. Uh, it's gonna be a week or two before I find out anything. So that's, uh, we're not gonna wait for that. We're gonna do a water change. The other thing that was suggested, it's, um, well, there's probably multiple things going on here. One thing that's suggested is potentially bacteria as a secondary infection. So I'm contemplating whether I want to use antibiotics in this tank. I've been avoiding antibiotic for the longest time because of um, resistance, bacterial resistance and stuff like that. You know, one thing that I found interesting among all these is that if you look really carefully, the money quarry right in the middle right there. I don't see this guy often at all during the day, but it's always out now, just always on these branches. And there's the second one, I got two, and they're all just kind of nesting into the uh, the dead SPS. I guess the, uh, maybe the texture or maybe like the algae grove on there is just extra yummy. Two days later. I'm tired, man, I'm so tired. Today, uh, let's address this. Um, since the last video, I have went ahead and did a big water change. I think that's about 35 gallon worth. We, things seems a little bit happier. I wanna just do one quick video before I went ahead and start taking out all the uh, dead and mostly dead corals. Almost all the casualties are SPS. Uh, we'll start from here. On the SPS island, we have the goldenrod, the much beloved goldenrod. Unfortunately, it is no more. Look at this. LG is growing on the bleach skeleton. That's all she wrote. And to the left side, this also hurts me. This is the goth bonsai that has grown really well and started taking off. And in the back, I don't even remember what it's called. We'll go to the back uh, a little bit later to get a closer look. But among here, we also have the pink lemonades, the malnefisans, uh, the the Miyagi tort is kind of holding on the middle portion, but I do need to clip off the uh, dying pieces so that it does not spread. And surprisingly, the one up here, the electric Miyagi torts does not seem to be affected right there. That's really interesting. Completely fine, untouched. And in front, the slime ball, the middle portion is done, but the sides are still kind of holding on, which may be a good sign, I'm not sure. Same thing with the golden rod, it's just pelled out, but it's not to the point of like bleaching and dying. So there's like one or two SPS that's still kind of holding on, but as you can see, a lot of the Montes are just gone. Some of the Ghani seems a little bit stressed. The clam is thankfully okay. Monty pork caps bleaching has seems to have stopped, which is good, and I'll explain what I did. Swinging to the side, we can take a look at the uh, Euphilias, which is the torch corals, and also we have some frog spawn and hammer that seems to be doing okay as well. So whatever is affecting the SPS seems to be leaving the um, LPS and softies alone for now. Same thing with the elegance coral. The only LPS that seems to be really affected is this Space Invader Pectinia frag. Just this one though, the other one seems okay. When you see Aptasia moving onto the glass, from the sand pad, you know, you know it's bad. And speaking of anemones, I was looking for my Colorado sunburst anemone. It seems to have detached and then moved to the sand bed, which may be a good opportunity for me to move it somewhere more appropriate. 
because I was starting to regret putting it right there. It's just stinging the zoas around it and it's closing up. And as a result, you can see some of these zoas starting to open up again. So that's kind of like the silver lining, I guess. And I also want to point out that the uh, TNT and the Kapora is also no more. Great Carol is the one that actually recommend me getting the TNT and the Kapora to go with the golden rod of the, because of the color contrast. So that's really sad about that one. But again, uh, here's another illustration of how the softies are doing completely fine when SPS is just checking out. Look at the uh, Pamalama's uh, Weeping Willow, totally fine right there. So let's talk about what I did to fix this. Now causing the issue was I think number one light shark. And then in the last two weeks, there was like two day where the night, during the night temperature just plummeted. Normally this tank is about 70, 77.8. Uh, those two night, it dipped down to 74 for whatever reason. We are just having cold spell and I was not here to insert one more heaters. Actually, no, I take that back. The third heater is in there, but for whatever reason, it was not enough. I got two 500 watts heater and then one 100 watts. It was not enough, temperature dipped. Once again, what I did was like one big water change and also some of the reefers I really respected recommended that, hey, maybe it's time to look into dosing antibiotic into your tank, which is something that I really, really avoided in the past simply because I don't understand it. And ever since a kid, I have been told to just really be careful of overusing antibiotics. So in terms of antibiotics, I've only done it once as a dip and that was the KFC dip. Uh, I was having issue with one of the torches. So I've actually tried to use the pretty popular KFC dip to try to save that torch head. So I do have some uh, Cipro on hand, that's antibiotics. And um, after giving it some thoughts and seeing the trajectory of the tank, I figured, okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and do it. So I hit up uh, my Reef Sensei Jim uh, in terms of like, what is his recommendation in terms of how to treat the tank with antibiotics. From there, he linked me to a Reef to Reef thread that Lynn shared with him before. And that was written by Aqua Biomics, uh, Eli on how he experimented with Cipro's um, treating brown jelly disease. So I do happen to have some Cipro in hand. Um, I went ahead and did a food tank treatment uh, two days ago. Tonight, I'm gonna do the second treatment. It's gonna be three treatment in total. At this point, I don't wanna share too much about the use of antibiotics in reef tanks simply because I am not in the nose. I'm no expert. I followed the script, I was like, oh, let's give it a go because of how severe this is. Um, otherwise, I would try not to touch antibiotics as much as possible. In the future down the road, I'll try to get some experts to come on here and share about the use of antibiotics and how to do it responsibly, especially in, uh, in a hobby. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, I did the first dose of Cipro treatment to this tank in order to control the bad bacteria or pathogens. And we'll go from there. Oh, you haven't seen this, huh? Come look. Look at this all white. Look how much I pulled out already. Oh, that's it. It's all white. It's gone. So this is what a parrotfish feel like, huh? Chomping down on SPS corals. Oh, there it is. Ho chunk. Much easier. Frag plug. Some bubble algae. Haven't seen that in a while. And there's a money quarry right there. What? Oregon tort is still alive and well in the back? That's a nice surprise. The reason I'm pulling off the dead coral versus just leaving them in the tank is because uh, uh, Jim made a good point. It's like, okay, if the coral is not like dead dead, right, it's still dying, there may be bad bacteria that's kind of still feasting on these, on the tissue and you don't want that in the tank as you're trying to recover, you're trying to remove as much as possible. So that makes sense. So I figure I'll go ahead and start Removing these guys. Oof, not a good job. The bulk of it is done, I think. I'm gonna get a clipper and try to clip the rest out. So I'm gonna just put down the camera because I think we have seen enough death and destruction today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the result show. The ICP test came back. This time I used Reef Moonshiners ICP, this is brand new, the MS test. Andre of Reef Moonshiners, partner of Oshmo, and it has some of the elements that the ATI does not, and it has a higher resolution. What that means is that certain elements that was too insignificant in the ATI ICP test that may not show up, 
will show up now. And that is certainly appreciated when you're dosing trace elements. We will save the talk about different ICP tests, what each element does in your system, uh, trace elements importance, etc, etc for another video. For this particular video, let's go over it really quickly to see if anything jumps out. One thing to keep in mind is that in these results, it will kind of give me a kind of like an arrow, whether this element is elevated or it should be lowered, etc. However, I'm actually taking the numbers and plugging them into the Reef Moonshiner's uh, calculator. So even though you may see a check mark uh, in this XP test results, it may not be ideal after I plug it into the uh, Reef Moonshiner's tool. My number one concern is whether I have pollutant or some kind of toxin in the system. I had a little bit, but nothing to really jump out and say this is the problem. So I'm kind of ruling that out. Nothing really got into the water. One thing that jumped out that was kind of interesting and support the argument that caused a light shock is that three of the trace elements that was low is chromium, iron, and manganese. And all of these, if you're looking at the Leaf Moonshiner's tool, said that if you have a low amount of this kind of trace element, you see signs of pale and faded looking corals, and they do support corals against light and thermal stress. And I see my wife kind of ghosting in and out. Why don't you come in? Why don't you come in? So going back to the whole issue of what happened to this tank, what caused this crash, one of the major argument is light shock. I put in the AI blade, I severely underestimated the spread, the new spectrum, how efficient it is. So that's strike number one, coral stress. I put on the carbon reactor, I jammed it full of carbon, I ran it 24 seven, I polished the water too much, more light penetrated, and I did not think to redo the power reading after I started running carbon reactor. I had never made a connection. I thought I would use the carbon reactor to pull out the potential toxin from the yellow Fiji letter. I didn't think that it's gonna polish the water as well. I should have known better. That's strike number two. Strike number three, at some points, my chromium, iron, and manganese were low. And my guess is that maybe the carbon reactor also started pulling out trace elements like this that usually help kind of combat <laughs> light. Some people also pointed out that the carbon reactor could be pulling out trace elements. And in this particular case, whether it's a carbon reactor pulling out the chromium, iron, and manganese that help corals fend off excess lights, or maybe these elements were just low to begin with, which I kind of doubt because I daily dose them. This is strike number three. If I am a betting man, I say that the uh, light shock took out the anacoporas. Uh, the, all the anacoporas that's more sensitive to higher lights, that's number one. And then the dying anacopora invited bad bacteria to just bloom and secondary infection, etc., and just like a downward spiral, and hence the crashing of most of my SPS corals. <laughs> I realized I did not talk about the maintenance of this tank at all. This tank is basically zero maintenance for the most part. 